Hey guys, it's Jack here, and today I just wanted to make a video to help you guys prepare for the VC exams since they're coming up very soon. Now, I'm going to split up this video into three sections. How I was able to actually sit down and study for the exams, how I learned and how I actually crammed for the actual exams, and finally what I did the day before the exam and the day of the exam. I scored a 40 plus in all my subjects apart from Chinese so I'd say I have a decent knowledge of how to learn and how to study but I wouldn't say the advice that I give in this video is applicable to those who want to get scores like 50s because to be frank I didn't put in enough effort to even deserve a 50. I left all my stuff until the end of the year I had 2,000 hours recorded on my phone using an app called Stay Free on random apps like TikTok, reading manga and watching anime and I played quite a bit of video games during the year in year 12. So just to give you guys an idea of how much 2000 hours is, 2000 hours, the 2000 hours I wasted in year 12 divided by 24 hours in a day. Out of 365 days I spent a whole 83 days just wasted away doing things that although gave me personal enjoyment probably weren't too beneficial to succeeding in VC, which although was one of my priorities, wasn't everything for me in year 12. I wanted to have a good enjoyment outside of school as well and just be able to sit back and relax sometimes because I felt that that was pretty important to me. So the advice I'm going to give is for those students who are cramming for the exam, which I think is very applicable because it's the 15th of October when I'm recording this video which means the exam will be coming up in a month. So, at this time, if you're watching at this time, advice such as keep it consistent throughout the year, which I definitely back. I, if I could go back in time, I would tell myself, I would force myself to be consistent because if I told myself, I probably wouldn't have listened. But I would make myself be consistent and that way I wouldn't have to cram because that made me undergo a lot of stress as well. So I definitely recommend planning everything out from the start of the year and just keeping on top of things. Because here's how you think about it, right? If you're at the start of the year, if you study two hours a day, right? By the end of the year, you've studied this many hours. If you start studying halfway through the year, you're gonna have to study four hours a day to match up to those two hours a day from the start of the year. And it's probably gonna be less efficient because I don't think I can study for four hours and keep the same level of learning pace that I have when I study for two hours. But that advice is probably too late for most of you, so let's move on to the actual cramming advice. Now, first off, if you want to cram properly, you have to make sure you're actually learning every single moment that you're sitting there studying. And there are a few things that stop me from being able to do this, which I got rid of. My brother, well I didn't get rid of my brother, um, I simply removed myself from his presence. So I would always go to a library to study. And there's a lot of psychological evidence that backs this. Your room is for sitting around, scrolling TikTok, laying on your bed sideways, scrolling TikTok, watching anime, playing video games, watching YouTube, consuming media. Your room is made for everything apart from sitting down properly and studying. And now I know there's going to be people who are able to sit down at the desk and study but I can't, not with the bed over there. In fact, right now, I'm still tempted to just jump in my bed and nap. But that's why I removed myself from my room. I went and sit down in the library. And in the library, when everything's so quiet and everyone's studying around you, it's kind of odd to just pull out your phone and start watching TikTok and stuff. At least you feel a bit bad, or at least I did, when I saw everyone else trying to learn and me just wasting my time away. So I found going to the library was very helpful. Now another tip that I have for people who do want to study at home, I think this is really effective and my friend from Melbourne High, um, so I went to Melbourne High and the environment was really good because everyone was helping each other out and giving each other tips. So my friend Pranit, he told me that what he did was he would set out his books on his desk before he would left for school every day. This way when he came back home, his book would be staring at him, right? So instead of laying down on his bed and 
watching some TikToks or watching YouTube or going to just sit on a couch and watch TV. Since his books and everything were ready for him to study, he thought, well, I may as well study, right? And this mentality of making things easier for yourself is going to make it easier for you to study. If you have books in front of you, if all the tabs are open to study, you're more inclined to just sit down and study. If nothing's open and you have to get your book from some drawer, you're going to be like, oh, this is so tiring, I'll do all this later. After two hours of scrolling TikTok, feeling tired, taking a shower, going back to bed, napping for a bit, waking up at 2am and realising that it's too late to study. That was a bit of a personal anecdote. But moving on from that, making it readily available, one of the best tips I can give. Now, moving on from how I was able to sit down and study, let's focus on what I actually did when I studied. All right? And at this point in time where there's a month left for exams, I think this technique of mine is very helpful. So what I did was I spanned the exams. I just did exam after exam. Now, people will give you advice saying that doing that is not effective. And I agree. Brainlessly doing exam after exam without thinking about anything and just correcting it and moving on, that is very ineffective. What I did was after each exam, I'd identify the questions I did wrong and I'll match them up with a part of the study design that was relevant. And I go back to that study design and learn it thoroughly from bottom up. I start from the easy questions, build my way up. So I was prepared to tackle a similar question in my next exam. Now, what if the question was a stupid mistake you made? What if it wasn't anything to do with the content and it was just, you made a dumb mistake. You didn't read the molar mass or you didn't read the units. And these are common mistakes in chemistry, physics, maths, these type of subjects. And this is a tip I got from my special tutor, Rob. And I think this is one of the best tips I've been given or one of the best learning techniques I've ever been taught. For these dumb mistakes, the best way to get rid of them is to just screenshot the question or cut out the question, paste it in some booklet or just put it on some Word document. Make it three columns, alright, three columns. One column for the actual question itself, second column what you did wrong, and third column is the amount of times you read it. And now you'd have a whole list of questions that are dumb mistakes. And I'd go back. At the end of every week I look at it, I'd do every question again. If I make the same mistake, I'd be annoyed. And out of spite, the next time, I won't make the same mistake again. Right? It sounds like a weird technique, but you'll be so annoyed that you did the same dumb mistake twice that you're never going to do it again. And you won't. And if you do do it for the third time, you're even less likely to do it for the fourth time because you're so pissed at yourself for messing up three times in a row. Right? Great technique. I use it. I still made dumb mistakes in the exam, but I made a lot less than I used to. And why this exam technique works, right? Why doing exam, fixing up mistakes, doing exam again? If you do enough exams, right, there's not much left to fix. And this is also why I say this is a good cramming technique, but not necessarily good if you want to get 50. If you want to full mark your exam, I recommend learning all the content very well from the start of the year consistently. This way, you won't have to keep going back to revise parts of the study design. But if you're like me and one month before there was a lot of things you didn't know, doing that will help you cover up little holes in your knowledge. By the time that you've done enough exams, you probably patched up all those little gaps in your knowledge and be prepared enough to get a pretty good study score. Now, moving on from how I studied, I want to talk about what you should do on the days leading up to the exam and the day of the exam. Now, a common advice that I hear people give is don't study the day before the exam. And it could be right. I think it's pretty good advice for some people. But if you're sitting there, not sure if you have all the knowledge and maybe very unconfident that you know everything, I suggest the day before the exam just do a bit more cramming. Don't sleep late because of it. But the day before the exam, if there's a lot of things you don't know, I, su I think it was very worth it for me, because I didn't know a lot about physics and chemistry. The day before those two exams, I crammed like half the syllabus into my head. And I found it beneficial, right? So I think, depending on where you're at, some last minute cramming could give you that extra edge. It could just appear on your exam. But don't let it affect your sleep. 
right, then it's not worth it. If you're cramming until 2 a.m. and you're waking up groggy and you can't think straight and you forget the things that you learnt down pat a few weeks ago, then it's not worth it. But some cramming on the day before, if done right, could be beneficial. On the day of the exam, however, don't cram. It will just give you some unnecessary stress and you're not likely to retain that much information, especially since you haven't slept on it. But on the day of the exam, I'm just going to give you guys some typical Asian parent advice. So what my parents told me, don't eat too much oily foods, don't eat too much food, don't eat too little food, just eat the right amount of food. So when you get there, you're full but not bloated. And other than that, what I found helpful to just mentally psych myself out for the exam. Of course, remember water. That's very important. You always need water. It's very beneficial and it can help you focus sometimes. But back to the topic. Before my exam, I need to give some context. So in year 9, I went to debating. There was a debater, or my, also my friend at the time, called David. I used to be really nervous when facing public speaking challenges, like talking in front of people. I could never do that very well. I'd say I'm a lot better now. I'm still not perfect, but this technique definitely helped me at the time. So what I did was he told me to just put two fingers against this area of your neck and you can kind of feel your pulse. And if you just sit on it and just listen to your pulse and just relax a bit, it kind of calms you down. And this worked for me. I'm not sure if it worked for everyone. But, you know, give it a shot. It doesn't hurt. What you shouldn't do, I learned this recently in med school, is you should not put both fingers on both sides of your neck. Because what that's going to cause you to do is probably go unconscious. Because it will stop the blood to your brain. But just a light touch here to feel the pulse. Calms you down a bit. Also, doing some meditation before the exam is pretty helpful, I'd say. It helped me a bit, at least. So try it out, you know, never hurts. Now, what not to do after the exam. This is something I did. I'm guilty of this. So after the exam, I was asking my friends, oh, what did you get for this question? And I was all worried and stuff. And I think that, looking back, it wasn't very productive. There's nothing I could change about the exam. And there's nothing that I achieved out of asking other people other than give me more stress and give them more stress. So don't be one of those people. And if you really feel the need to talk about the exam afterwards, find someone that you're sure will want to discuss it with you. Because if you just go up to some random person who maybe didn't feel that well about the exam and you start talking about all the questions, then they might feel pretty, uh, feel pretty bad about it as well. So try and avoid that. But other than that, that's all I have for you guys today. And I hope you guys can take this advice and try and implement it to some extent or use what you think is helpful and go smash out your exams. Peace.